Jesus. The stone was moved and he had gone away. The angel said, fear not, I know who's seeking. But he is risen, this she heard him say. Gone, the stone is rolled back, gone, the tomb is empty, gone, to sit at the Father's for us with all your heart and your life and thank you for praying for us always thank you for the peace and the joy that you have given your people that know you thank you for making a way for all of us to accept you as Lord and Savior thank you for your word in John 3 16 and 17 where it says for God, you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in you should not perish but have everlasting life. For God, you sent not your Son into this world to condemn this world, but that this world through him might be saved. 
Thank you and bless you, Lord. We will not forget all your benefits. Bless you for forgiving all our iniquities and healing all our diseases. You are the one that redeems our life from destruction. And you crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. You satisfy our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. You, Lord, bring healing righteousness for all who are oppressed. You, Lord, are merciful, gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. Your mercy, Lord, is from everlasting to everlasting upon those who reverence and love you. And your righteousness is unto the children's children to all that keep your covenant and commandments. Father God, I praise you. I thank you. I honor you. It is an honor to be one of your children. Lord, just help me to talk to others about you. Help them to understand what we say. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer for any reason, feel free to please call us at area 909 943-3543. There will be someone here between 10.30 and 11.30 today to pray for you. If you would like to write us and let us know if you enjoy the broadcast, our mailing address is Holiness Preaching Broadcast, Post Office Box 1122, Colton, 92324. Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all the prayers that went up this morning for this broadcast. Now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll really help us this morning because we've got a subject here that the whole church ought to hear. Jesus said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessings which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The, blood, the, bro the bread which we speak of, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. I want you to know this morning that Jesus said, Except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And when Jesus was doing this, they was, he was talking about the Passover that God set up in the third, in the book of Exodus to the children of Israel while they were slaves to the Egyptians. I want you to know that the Egyptians went down, took the Israelites down into Egypt as friends. They were there a few years and they become slaves. But Israel went down to Egypt with 75 souls. And when they came out, they had over 3 million. They had 600,000 men and women, not counting the children. You think about 6,000 men and 6,000 women, how many children they had? It's been estimated anywhere between 3 and 6 million. 3 million is enough. But they went down there as a, as a family, and they came back as a nation. They came back as an army of the living God. And God led them across the Red Sea and gave them certain ordinances to keep. And I'm going to read to you out of the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye to all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too small for the lamb, 
let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side post and the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire, and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not, it, eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with his puritan thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remains of the, uh, until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall, thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where the ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that show shall be cut off from the Israel. And in the first day there shall be a holy conversation. In the seventh day there shall be a holy conversation. To you no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you and ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for it is the set same day when I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore ye shall observe, uh, observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. I want you to get this. He said you're going to do this ordinance forever. No place in God's scriptures from Genesis through Revelations did God do away with the Passover. In the first month on the 14th day of the month of even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day. And on the month that eve, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land, ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. When these, when Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that in the basin and strike it the lentils and the two sides, the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door at, of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through this and smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the vandal, and, two, and the two on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to those sons forever. I want you to get that forever part. He didn't say, we'll do it until I change my mind. He said, I'm, it's you going to do it forever. I want you to know that Jesus and all the apostles and the first of the early church they kept the Passover every year. They never, in no place in the scripture did God do away with the Passover. The word Easter is only found in the Bible, the, the King James Version one time, and that's a mistranslation. All the translations outside of the King James translates the Bible that they say it's a Passover. I want you to know when King James had the, the Bible translated, he brought those men in from all over the world, and they did a great job of translation. But I want you to know that the Harley Church of Rome influenced those fellows. 
Not only in that translation, but in just about all the rest of them. But God said that the Passover was set up for a, a memorial to the Lord for every generation. And it says in the book of Luke, when Jesus, when Jesus got through with the book of Luke, and he was getting ready to put on a tree, when he said, when he when he got ready to be nailed on the tree, he said to the the apostles and all all of his disciples that was with him. He said, this is my body. Eat ye all of it, in the book of Luke. And he said in another place, he said, in the same book of Luke, he said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you. And the word of God teaches very clearly that Jesus was a sacrificial lamb of God. When John the Baptist was preaching, and Jesus walked by, in the first chapter of the book of John, John pointed his finger to the Lord Jesus, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I want you to know it's a shame and a crime that everyone in the world is not saved. Jesus shed his blood that every human being in the world would be saved. And Peter says this is the will of God. God is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but rather that all should come to repentance. That tells me it's the will of God for men to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and to serve him. He said, I am the Lord God. You shall have no other God before me. And I want you to know that Easter was set up more than 2,000 years before Jesus came. The Chaldeans observed Easter, but they served it and they had Lent. They had served, they had Lent at Easter. 2,000 years before Jesus ever came. And no place in the Bible did Jesus say, we're going to observe Easter. First of all, the word Easter originally was Aster, and it was a female goddess, and claimed to be the wife of Baal, the god of the sun. And you know what Elijah did to the 400 prophets of Baal? God told the king, said, you bring the prophets down and meet me at Mort Calmo. And, and the prophets came 400. And you know the story, how that they prayed, God, Elijah said to them, let the God that answered before, let him be God. What did they do? Those prophets, they, they, they prayed from sun up till noon. And Elijah began to make fun of them, said, maybe he's asleep. Holler louder, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's going on a long journey. Why don't you just uh, make a little more noise? And said they cut themselves with knives and bled and screamed, and there was no answer. And so Elijah said to the king, bring water and pour water around the sacrifice. He poured the water around the sacrifice till it, all the trenches were full of water. The sacrifice was covered with water. He said, bring more barrels and pour more barrels. And he just looked up to heaven and he said, Lord, let this people know that I'm here. It's your word. I want you to know if you're someplace at the word of God, it's going to take place. It's going to happen for you. I love that word of God. Every time you see the Word of God mentioned in the Bible, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus was the Word in the Old Testament. He was the Word that was by the fire when He spoke to Moses when the bush was on fire. There was a voice came out. It was the Word of the Lord. Everywhere the Word is read in the Old Testament, it was the Lord. When He says Word, it was the Lord. When He said uh, Word in the, in the Old Testament, it was always the Word of the Lord. And in John, in the New Testament, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made which was made. Go down to the 12th verse, it says, he, he came into His own, and His own received Him not. But to as many as received Him, to them give He power to become the sons of God. I want you to know He hadn't lost any power. You see, we read in Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus don't change. We change. Man changes. Tradition changes. Ordinances change, but not Jesus. He just says he's the same. And Jesus told Moses, keep this ordinance, ordinance forever. And he said it three times in the, in the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. It's also mentioned in other places. Jesus, the only thing Jesus did to the Passover was 
He was the real Passover. Where when Moses and the children of Israel slayed the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost and the mantle, the blood was a protection for the Israelites while God sent the death angel through Egypt. And he told old Moses, you be ready. And I want you to know when God slew the firstborn of every creature in Egypt, I want you to know, he said, the scripture says he killed the firstborn of every man. He killed the firstborn of all the animals. And they said there was a cry come up out of Egypt, and they said to them, Israelites, get out of here. I want you to know when God deals with people, if they don't want to obey him, he can make them obey him. And they did. Moses took the children of Israel out to the Red Sea. But you know that God had to send ten plagues on them Egyptians. And each time they said to go, go, go sacrifice, go serve your Lord, go serve the God that you serve. And before Moses would get back to camp, Pharaoh would change his mind. Do you know even after he killed the firstborn and told him to get out, Moses didn't even get to the Red Sea till here come the Egyptian army after him. Changed his mind again. So what does the scripture say? It says that God made the wheels come off of their chariots. Float them down. And God opened up the Red Sea and said the ch children of Israel crossed over on dry ground. And got over on the other side and the scripture says that Moses stretched his rod out over the Red Sea and it came back together. And it says all the Egyptians and their chariots and their horses drowned in the Red Sea. And Miriam sang the song and danced. It was a wonderful food. Because my God had given the Israelites victory over their enemy. And God hasn't changed. He's still given every one of that serves him still got the victory. Jesus is our victory. He's always going to be our victory. He's never failed. The Word of God says that Jesus never fails. And if the Word says Jesus never fails, He never fails. Can't fail. You can, you can preach anything you want to, but there's one thing you got to say. If God's Word says it, it's forever settled in the heavens. Jesus said, My Word is forever settled in heaven. He said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. And that's the truth. Heaven and earth not pass away. In fact, the scripture says that the heavens shall be roped up as a scroll, and the earth shall melt with fervent heat. But we, the children of Israel, I'm talking about the spiritual Israel. You see, we're the spiritual Israel. Everyone that's born again is spiritual Israel. The Jews are the original Israelites. And I want you to know that the Jews are still the natural Israelites. And contrary to what a lot of people think, Israel's going to have their country. God said that He's going to give them that land all the way from the Great Sea to the Euphrates, and that's going to belong to them. The, you, they got over 35 tribes in there trying to take it away from them. Every one of them tribes is going to fail. If the one comes against them, he'll defeat them, or if 35 comes against them, they're going to defeat them. I want you to know the Word of God says that Jerusalem shall be overtrod by the Gentiles until the day of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And I want you to know Right now in Jerusalem, there's Gentiles. There's all kinds of false gods being worshipped there. But I want you to know that Israel still has the Wailing Wall. And it, Israel still has Jerusalem. And Israel will end up with Jerusalem at the end, whether the Gentiles like it or the world likes it or anybody else likes it. Because God's going to defeat the enemy. He said he's going to get, get him some people out of the Gentile nations. And every nation of the earth is going to be blessed because of Abraham, which was a Jew. And I want you to know that every country in the world has been blessed because of the Jews. Jesus said, to, Jesus said to the woman at the well, she said, you say that we should worship in Jerusalem. And our father said we should worship here in this mountain. He said, salvation is of the Jews. And Jesus told the woman, give me, give me a drink. She said to him, why do you ask me for water? The Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. That tells you right there that Jesus took on the form of a Jew because he said very plainly that God came down and took on the, the form of a Jew because he says, God became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. The only begotten Son of God is the one that died in our place and he's the one that we have Passover about. And you can call it Easter or anything you want to, but Easter is a curse word as far as I'm concerned because we don't worship Easter. We worship Jesus Christ and we we serve 
communion and have passover,